Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you. Today, we're going to continue our conversation about metaverse. There was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of questions. You know, what is, what is a business model? How will it work out? What kind of professionals can enter and support this uh, fantastic, exciting, alluring place? Uh, is it a fad or is it real? How real is metaverse? All of those questions um, we've talked about last time, and it's a good opportunity for us to continue talking about it this time. Uh, before we begin, I have a fantastic guest. Uh, she is right in the midst of it, and it's a good opportunity to ask her questions. Um, if you know someone who is building something in blockchain, and I think of it very widely, think DeFi, NFTs, metaverse, uh, smart contracts, whatever you name it, that you think is, you know, could add to this conversation, to the conversation of building and to the conversation supporting builders. So we've invited the actual builders, the CEOs and, and the, the business professionals and, and the coders who actually do that. We've also invited lawyers and accountants who actually help to uplift this ecosystem, who could add to this conversation to enrich our learning and understanding, let me know. I am learning myself. I am super curious about this space, have been curious about it now since 2015, um, have worked in it, in and out, very excited about it. Would like to learn together. If you know anyone who could be a fantastic guest, ping me, direct message me, leave me a note. I definitely want to hear from that person. And without further ado, Claudia, welcome to Blockchain Value. Great to have you. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Olga. Thanks for having me. So um, I'm the Director of Marketing for MetaJuice. We're the blockchain subsidiary of Together Labs, formerly MVU, which is a metaverse company since, I don't know, 16 plus years. So we've been around for a really long time. Um, but it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, let's start with basic, you know, well, maybe not the, the basic, basic, but I'm not going to ask you what is blockchain, but I will ask you to define metaverse because that is a definition that is in flux. And I'm just curious how you think about it. Well, for, from a Together Labs perspective, um, our goal is connecting people and our metaverse is exactly that. It's a virtual world where people are allowed to have authentic human connection, build friendships, have relationships. Um, and we're, we're a huge pioneer in that space. You know, we've been around since 16 plus years. We have 1 million daily active users, global, highly female, very active economy beneath that as well with 14 billion in-game transactions and or actually 27 million transactions, 14 billion in-game credits every month, which is just insane. Um, and we have a real opportunity to kind of take those transactions and blockchain enable them and turn them into digital assets, like what we've done with Bitcoin, um, which explodes like the service side part of that economy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a giant virtual world in a sense where people can make real human connections and friendships. Exciting. Uh, Together Lab sounds like an exciting place. Where are the players located and what kind of games are they playing? Um, so it's not really as much as games as it is real connections and meeting their friends online. Um, I mean, I've heard things as far as, you know, from my colleagues of people that just meet online and they go you know, with their mermaid friends and meet for coffee, like before they go to school or something, something like that, where they're actually like genuinely making friends and, and enriching those connections in a virtual way. That's very different from social media that we see today. And underneath that, there's this vibrant economy that kind of flows through the entire metaverse. So it's just exciting time. And what, 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 when you say vibrant economy, what, what is it that people are trading? What, what is a value in, in together, uh, in together land universe? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what, is, I mean, what, what is tradable? <laughs> I haven't heard someone say it like that. I mean, but we do have like, not only in view, we just launched a new metaverse with me and more to come. So we're kind of like a metaverse company that knows how to make metaverses and has continued and will continue to do so today. Um, but the transactions that are being made on, on platform are through Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, you can actually pay people for a service. So let's say I want to, you know, enter the platform, not be an entirely new user. I want to look like I belong. So I want like that cool looking mesh head. I want like a whole outfit that looks like me or 
Maybe I want to be a man. I don't know. Whatever I want to do on this platform is possible. So I could work with a creator, pay them in Bitcoin and exchange those credits. Um, but there's also like actual credits on the platform, like digital credits that have worked in the gaming industry and, you know, like overall virtual industry as well, where they can exchange digital goods, um, like wearables, et cetera, places like furniture, et cetera, to kind of accessorize their place and accessorize their avatar. And that's been going around forever. And those are the 14 billion in-game assets that I'm talking about, which is just crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I, I, yeah. um, I guess of the. I'm not gonna age myself, but of the generation where real things are real. Um, <laughs> but but I do have two preteens in my house who who find other things even more real. So oh yeah, I have a niece. I have a niece as well, and she's like in love with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we have a few folks saying hello. Hi, Vicky. Thank you for saying hi. Um, Rodrigo, I hope you got your video figured out. I cannot help you others and pray. So you got that from me. Um, and, uh, and I hope uh, other folks are joining and asking questions. So if you have any questions or want to be part of this conversation, definitely a good time to, to share those questions. Um, very exciting. So the users, where are they, where are they located? Are they all over the world or are they concentrated in certain geographies? Where, 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 where are they? It's completely global. There's about 50% in the US right now, but it's completely global network. They're all over the place, to be honest. But it's highly female, which is something that I didn't expect coming into the space. Um, and very like, you know, welcomed to that. <laughs> and what what is it in, in this game that is, you know, um, appealing to the, you know, female demographic sounds like uh, on the slightly maybe possibly younger side? I think it's a lot of the fashion pieces, to be honest, um, the fashion and actually like building a friendships and relationships that's more appealing because a lot of these metaverses that are out there, that are super successful are really gamified. And I like games. I, I mean, everyone loves games, but I think also on top of that is that authentic human connection, kind of like what Roblox is doing, what a couple other companies are doing. Um, but we've been doing this for a really long time and we allow those, kind of smaller spaces where people would really get to know each other and they don't really get lost. They can just kind of explore this like massive metaverse, but in different rooms and areas that they can explore for their interests, for their likes. And then if they don't like this room, they can go to another room. They can kind of jump around the entire like in view metaverse, which is really exciting. Super cool. Uh, yeah. Being lost is not fun. It's, it's certainly not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a real issue in this space actually that I, I didn't really think about because I've only really played, you know, I played with a bunch of met metaverses, but you know, there are, you know, you can get into a building, you can get lost in the metaverse essentially. So it's a big world out there. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you know, I, I, I have a good navigation system in my head, but, you know, my mother and my husband, you know, they can get lost in a small city called San Francisco. So there you go. Yeah. Um, imagine, a a much bigger place. <laughs> imagine a virtual world where everything's limitless. Like, yeah, that's a key space to get lost. <laughs> um, let's talk about MetaJuice. Uh, you actually work for the subsidiary, which is called MetaJuice. What is it? What is the focus? What is it? How does it relate to the parent company? Yeah, um, so MetaJuice is a blockchain subsidiary of Tether Labs. We just launched it in, I think it was August 27th at the Games Week conference. Um, but our main focus is that's what's going to house our blockchain assets, our meta tokens, our NFTs, like the land sales that we're going to be doing, all of these excessive like blockchain driven economic models, etc. is all going to be within MetaJuice. So we really wanted somewhere for all of that to live. Um, and we we're building and creating all of these different things. So it made sense to create and build MetaJuice and have our entire like blockchain invested team from Together Labs live there as well. Uh, you speak my language. You talk about real estate and fashion all in one <laughs> conversation. We could be friends uh, <laughs> for a very long time. Now, this is really cool. Um, yeah. So what is, I'm just curious, you know, tell me, help me understand. You know, uh, you, you know, there are definitely other folks. We just interviewed, uh, you know, someone else who uh, have been uh, building Decentraland for for a little while too. Um, you know, so how how are you guys envisioning to using that virtual real estate for the purposes of this? You know, what you call authentic connections. 
You know, I, that's something that I I can't really talk too much about because it's still in the works. Um, but, you know, it's very much on the pipeline. It's very much in the core focus of the team and what we're doing and what we're building in the future, especially with these other metaverses, etc. And it's a high use case in the space, especially when bringing in NFTs onto platforms and maybe adding that interoperability. We're all trying to connect, especially with our other token. We actually have another token called the core that we just launched. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's the goal of everything is to bring it all into an interoperable place where you can take an NFT from one place and assets and bring it into another space. And land is just one place for all of that to live and to show your NFT assets and like showcase them. So yeah, it's a huge play in the space. It's just everyone right now is trying to figure out where to do that and how to do that. Um, And a lot of places like the central land, like they created it just based off land sales and they started from that and then kind of grew up from there. So we're, you know, experimenting with a few ideas, but nothing is really cemented right now. Really cool. And, um, and when you're talking NFTs, you're thinking those, the fashion items, th- those would be NFTs or are you thinking maybe other, you know, game pieces or uh, will be kind of, uh, uh, which part will be nft now I think yeah. I speak it as a verb. I'm not sure if that's correct <laughs> word, but um. no, it's fine. <laughs> um, you know what? Actually, like, there's so many things that could become an NFT, as you know. Um, for us, I mean, like, we recently just did a really high fashion NFT with the shoes five three zero four five brand. Um, we they sold the NFT on the dematerialized platform was an NFT marketplace for fashion. And we, they're able to redeem their NFTs, anyone who purchases this NFT on platform. And there's three versions of this. There's a lava boot, a thunder boot, and an ice boot. And ice was actually a one-time auctionable item. And the other two were like 150 pairs of each boot sold at about like 200 euros each. And they're actually able, like we built a digital wearable NFT version on platform and they have cool superpowers, like the boots that have thunder, have thunder, lightning bolts that go around them. And then the boots that um, have lava, have fire that go around them. And then equivalent ones have ice that goes around them as well. And actually, we worked with our creators on platform to build this out on the vision that was with the Shoes 53045 brand. Um, so it was really exciting. Like actually like, I love it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I thought I was eccentric with my purple and pink boots, you know, but these boots are literally, I'm, you know, I'm no shy that I like fashion. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'll, I'll admit <laughs> to this on, on the air, uh, but that sounds really cool. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I kind of want to test drive that. That sounds really exciting. The boots that have fire around you. I mean, you know, not dramatic, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, I mean, I think that's what's really cool too about fashion, the metaverse, and bringing in these brands is that anything they want to do can be realized. And we actually like also built out a room for the Shoes 53045 brand that's specialized for them. They created a mood board. And we went to, you know, like we went to town, we went with our entire creator team and we worked with the creators themselves. And they actually like created this whole mesh room for the shoes brand. And we did all of this within a week, which was insane on its own. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got a really capable team that's really ma- able to make it happen. And we've got a creator community that's 200,000 creators. So we've got the people to actually make this become reality, turn it into and bring it onto platform, which is really cool. Oh, that's exciting. Sounds like my kind of tribe, really. <laughs> Um, you know, colorful books with fire. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, I mean, the meetings that we had were just amazing. Like, you know, like we were just talking about the superpowers that we could put in the boot and adding these like particle effects, which is just like, you know, this is my job, you know? Really cool. Right now, it's just a plain Jane type of boot. Okay, I got it. Yeah, um, I mean, it's still really early, but, you know, we're able to actually make this happen in the real world or like virtual real world. Um, so even though like it's all thrown around right now, the metaverse and concepts and things that we could do, like, this is what we can actually do right now, which is awesome. You mentioned a couple of things you talked about interoperability and other metaverses and, you know, the concept that I refer as building bridges. Um, yeah. and that seems like a part of roadmap, you know, help me understand, you know, if, if the, you know, metaverse in, in, in meta juice is, is limitless. 
why would you like to make it even more so by having a bridge to another you know place like i don't know decentral land or whatever metaverse other metaverses you're thinking of bridging to well i i'm not going to say that we have a specific timeline of which ones we want to work with etc but i definitely think that as the metaverse industry as a whole we're all going to be successful together we all have our own strengths in different ways and we're all trying to like this is really early stage so we're all trying to build up this entire industry together and that's a huge key and in order for that to actually work it needs to be interoperable we need to be able to take an nft from one platform to another easily we need to be able to exchange that nft on platform with other users so they can have because the whole point of the nft is real ownership you know actually like being able to like have possession of that asset and being able to sell it to anyone all over the world you know like have that usability you know on platform is just like an added benefit so if we could do that in a way that all the metaverses would kind of communicate together at least like a lot of them and start small and then aim for the big picture you know that's that's the goal and that's what we're trying to achieve with uh, our token b core actually really cool um I love, and this is something I've observed in, in, in this industry for now quite a while, this t we're in it together feeling for quite some time. And I've also yeah. written about that in the play, you know, if, if in the past we used to sort of build um, continents, and so owning a continent was important. But now it was, what's going on in blockchain is a little bit more like an archipelago of many islands. Um, of fantastic things built and all every island has something unique and special something for for everyone um, the value of bridges becomes really really important because it really in the end what expands the pie i i kind of like that trend i like this collaborative spirit i like sort of bouncing idea of each other um, and sort of putting value not on the continent but in the bridges and my ability to do this trade to collaborate for us to one plus one to be greater than two. To me, that idea is, is, is very inspiring in blockchain generally and metaverse specifically. And I wonder what we can do to sustain it because to me, that's so, so different and uh, you know, such a different form of capitalism that we've had historically. So I'm kind of super excited. Do you think we can sustain that? I think we could, honestly. And I think that, you know, the, the one thing that all of these metaverses have in common or should have in common is this community focused approach. And a lot of them will talk about this. Um, but we, we have had that for a very long time. And that is the core of our business is the community that it's built around they actually built end like they've built all of the assets on platform majority of them on platform so like these 50 million digital wearables are all attributed or in assets are all attributed to our creators so i think that bringing in this crypto approach but with the creators with the builders with the people who actually made this possible and then giving them a little bit more participation through something like the core is something that's going to make this sustainable because in the end of the day like yes we are the company that holds you know in view together labs etc products but the community is what really drives its success so that's something that everyone needs to keep top of mind for sure uh, i have a few more questions yeah i do mm -hmm. want to talk to you and you mentioned this a few times this this concept this is another blockchain kind of unique concept is that concept of community, value and importance of community. This is a pretty unique time in history where every company, whether they have blockchain or not, are, are building community of loyal, true fans um, and uh, doing it so in intentionally. I'm just curious how you, you know, and, and, and clearly this is where, where marketing plays a huge, huge role. Um, how you are thinking about importance of it, how to build it. What is the sort of structure and the concept? Why is it important and how do you intentionally build it? The community is the most important thing um, because they're the ones that built it. And the way that we include them is, you know, educating them about the process and the benefits of NFTs, the ownership, the value of bringing tokens off platform like Bitcoin. So Bitcoin actually adds more value for the users because they can bring those assets and that value they create on platform platform for real value with our partnership with Uphold. So 
I think that just educating the community and actually having them involved in the process, like what we did with the Shoes 53045 launch, is what's going to make it successful. So like we brought in the brands and we didn't actually build out the assets ourselves. We had the creators on the platform build out the assets. And we also work with them ourselves as well. Like we have a lot of influencers on the platform and we get feedback on what's going on and what they want from the token and, and all of these things. And B Core itself will actually add a little bit more like, or a lot more participation in that way as well. So we'll get feedback from the community But all of our events and all of our marketing efforts are built around the community because they're the most important thing, at least from us and our perspective. Do the creators of the, you know, the Thunderboots 53045, uh, are they seeing the value of their success? How how you guys are thinking of this economy? Yeah, they definitely see the value. I mean, they they get paid for their their actual like service and providing this and building out the boot, etc. I think that later on the down the line, that will probably change into whether you can have more value, especially when they're creating NFTs themselves. Um, that's a way for a lot of the creators to get like real value out of this is being able to not only create on platform, but bring that into an NFT version off platform that's able to be sold to the public. And then they could also bring that and redeem it back on platform as well. So that interoperability is something that I was talking about as well before. So I think that just adding more ownership and transferability for users and creators on platform is a key to, you know, making this all successful and bringing in the community and having them have real value because that's, that's the real, you know, point at the end of day, you know, the universe, universe, the usability, sorry, of NFTs and blockchain creates basically like the MVU and Together Labs ecosystem. And Partnering with these companies and ideas in the metaverse space really bring this together and makes it all very cohesive. I just love it. So <laughs> we're coming to the end and I have so many more questions to <laughs> ask, especially that I now discovered what I'm, I'm missing in my closet. My husband will tell you nothing, <laughs> but I now know. So now you're virtual closet. <laughs> <laughs> the thunder boots are up there. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about, you know, look, I mean, there, there have been a quite a few brand partnerships, you know, like I'm, I'm actually not into really, really high end brand, but I've seen, you know, the, the, the sort of publicity around super plastic and Gucci, super Gucci. I thought it was kind of cute. There's sort of a yeah. physical object crafted in Italy and, and there is an NFT associated with it. There's sort of this kind of universe of, of, uh, of, marketing and metaverse i'm just curious what do you think is going to be the future of marketing and metaverse nfts came around you know just to to kind of add an image value of what we know as blockchain you know like the real thing that you're buying is that crypto cryptography like string of code you know like that real ownership of that asset um and the gap that we have right now and and why the metaverse is so popular I feel like it's because, you know, people want more usability on where to show off these NFTs. Like right now you can show them off with Twitter and Instagram posts, which is typical marketing I'm sure you know about. Um, and then there's a Snapchat digital overlay that allows NFTs to come on the Snapchat and you can like show them off that way. But where is there, there needs to be like more connection, you know, like we've got, that's why the Samsung invented the, the TV with the frame where you can actually have it in your house. And there's also like NFT events where you can showcase your NFTs as well. And that's helpful for a lot of brands, but there has to be a step farther than that. And I feel like the metaverse kind of bridges that entire gap because it allows the brands to really have like a human connection with their audiences, with the community, and it allows them to display their NFTs that they buy from these brands or create themselves in a real way through their avatar, through their living environment, in their home, etc. And that's why people are buying land. That's why people are are buying this type of real estate and investing money in their avatars, which they've been doing for a really long time already. But this needs to turn into, you know, like a real economic value off platform as well. And that's when blockchain comes in. Yeah, NFT has definitely made code sexy. Let's just leave it at that. (laughs) Yeah, it basically took like a very complex way and made it super simple. People like, oh, that's what it is? Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there, there is a huge potential there. Claudia, we are at the end. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, and, and not only because my mind is now spinning about the thunder boots. <laughs> That is definitely part of it, but not the only part. Uh, very exciting, and, and I've learned so much from you. I would like for you to maybe you know share one or two takeaway for the folks you know who joined for this conversation. You know what can they do today to be helpful to join the movement? Uh, how they can learn more or whatever else you think would be helpful at this point in history of metaverse and and blockchain. So, you know, the metaverse is still very at its early stages. So there's different ways that you can interact with it with NFTs and bring them on platform, etc. And we're all building that out. And I think a lot of questions that are out there right now are, you know, which ones are going to be successful? Which ones should I support? And I think that if you do your due diligence and you look into companies like MetaJuice, like Together Labs, who are focused on community building, have a history of actually being successful and creating successful metaverses, then that's kind of the people that you should actually be focused on. Like you should focus on those type of companies and learn from them who have had experience, like lots of experience with building out this, this pioneer way of, of virtually living in a space. Um, so, you know, definitely keep a, keep together labs on the map, um, especially MetaJuice and, you know, keep along with all the blockchain assets that we are building and we're continuing to build and have on the pipeline. 2022 is going to be a big year for this company. And I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be in the space. And, you know, the possibilities for brands in the metaverse are endless, limitless. And, um, you know, just excited to see what, what comes of it at the, end of, at the end of the day. This is an exciting time. Oh, yeah. The times are very exciting. Claudia, thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Um, it's been so much fun for so many reasons on so many levels. As I usually say, the future belongs to builders. And I really like Claudia's message that the time to build is now. The time to get in is now. And if you want to be in a position to shape the direction of this exciting new place, called Metaverse, probably a good idea to start acting now. Also, to act now, if you have suggestions who I should have conversation with, people like Claudia who are building every day and thinking how to do things in a different way in Metaverse and blockchain, DeFi, NFTs, let me know. We could have this great conversation. I could be learning from you. All of us could be learning from you. So definitely let me know. Um, and then, of course, I, I, I will never forget the Thunder Boots. Um, and I finally discovered the one thing that I'm missing in my closet. So um, that means it's a good day. I've definitely learned something. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And I very much look forward to seeing you soon again. Bye, everyone.